This meeting is being recorded. Good evening, Ship Familia. Welcome tonight to our Latinx webinar. Uh, tonight we are featuring our uh, partners with Western Digital and they are kicking butt in data storage. So I can't wait to hear what they have to share with us tonight. Um, we will have a poll that we are going to start right now. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. So if you can make sure and go into your poll feature and answer our poll question. Just wanna find out a little bit about our attendees and um, what academic class standing you have. Um, so with that, um, I want to go ahead and introduce our um, panelists who are coming to us from Western Digital. We have Tony Gallego, who is a university recruiter. We have Damaris Davis, who is a technologist in HDD and R&D. Jimmy Gomez, who's the product manager with Flash and We Unidos board member. And then Diana Ricalde, who is the moderator for the fireside chat portion and is also with the Flash and a We Unidos chair. So welcome Western Digital. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and um, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. And buenas noches, everyone. Uh, as Nicole said, my name is Jimmy Gomez. I'm a product manager here at Western Digital. Uh, super excited to be here. I know I'll speak for my colleagues as well that we're, we're really happy to say that we're you know new sponsors of Western or ah, new sponsors of Ship, and we're uh, really excited to to be here and tell you more about who we are. So uh, go over a quick overview of our agenda for today. Uh, we'll start off with an introduction of Western Digital. Tell you a little bit more about who we are, how uh, how our technology impacts the world. So kind of the reach that we have. Uh, then we'll switch gears a little bit to talk a little bit more about how you could start your career here. So we'll go over our full-time and internship programs. Uh, then we'll touch on the business resource groups that we have here at Western Digital and, and how they support us. Uh, and then we'll end today with a fireside chat with open Q&A uh, at the end for any questions that you might have for us. All right, so all of you on this webinar might not realize it, but there's a really good chance that your data, you use a Western product, Western digital product today because over 40% of the world's data is stored on one of our products. So this ranges from you know, cell phones to your computers, tablets. You might even have a Western digital external hard drive or a SanDisk flash drive. Uh, but more importantly, uh, our products are in the cloud. So if any of you went on TikTok today, and if it was either posting a video or watching a video, or if you friend, or if you sent any of your friends a snap, there's a really good chance that your data is stored on one of our products. Western Digital was founded in 1970, and it's actually one of the oldest surviving Silicon Valley companies. Uh, we've been in the storage industry for over 50 years, and we're uniquely positioned here because we're the only company that uh, develops in both hard disk drives, or HDD for short, and flash, which allows us to enable the entire market. So what, some of you might be asking, you know, why does this matter, or why is this important? And the reason that this is important is that flash is, flash is the technology that's going to help us keep up with emerging technology, right? So as, as uh, you, know, you know, the next iPhone, next iPad, uh, anything like that comes out, uh, Flash is what's going to be enabling that type of tech. Now, when we look at the HDD side, um, HDDs are the lifeline of the cloud. So last year, late last year, uh, during Amazon's annual reInvent conference, they had a keynote speaker, their senior vice president, Peter DeSantis, and he said, in the cloud, HDDs are still the king of big data. And this is one of the driving forces behind us continuing to innovate, continuing to invest money into HDDs. Because as the cloud gets bigger and bigger, as all of us keep storing more and more of our data on there, HDDs are, so, are the backbone to the cloud. So I've mentioned Flash uh, a few times now, and really what I want to hit home is you know, the reach that it has in the market. So here on the right-hand side, 
we're showing different products that that have flash storage within them. So you can see a tablet, talked about the cloud a little bit already, drones, automotive, uh, autonomous vehicles, especially within automotive, uh, without without storage that that doesn't work. Medical equipment, you know, some of your uh, your at home products. So think of your Alexa, your Google Home, any sort of smart device, and uh, one, it, it will be one of the driving forces with, behind 5G. So flash is not just about storage, though. It's actually about mobility. It's about power, and it's about performance. And it's a big driver of what's next. And this is why I, you know, I've mentioned a few times already that flash is going to help us, you know, is what is going to enable us with emerging technologies. Because, um, again, not only can flash store your, uh, store your data, but it can give you the performance that you need for, say, machine learning or artificial intelligence. Things like that is, is, is right up the alley of the flash market. So here at Western Digital, we try to see the big picture behind flash, right? And for this reason, that's why our products range from consumer to enterprise. So on the left-hand side, you see some of our, brand, our brands that I hope you recognize. And on the right hand, this is when we're working directly with businesses to help you know, meet their storage needs, make sure that our products are helping them go where they need to go. So on, on the right here, we're showing some of the segments that we play in. I've mentioned the cloud a few times already. If we think of, uh, and then the, lastly, when we, when we show embedded, you can think of uh, you know, virtual you know, VR headsets, things of that nature, are, they, need, they need flash storage. Also, we're, we play in different verticals, you know, from healthcare to government. Now on the y-axis, what I'm trying to show is the complexity of our, of our products. Our most simplistic product is just selling our kind of raw material, the, the NAND flash itself. So the, the dye, the, the wafers that we'll sell directly to customers so that they, they can build their own device. Or on the other end, we do sell, you know, custom SSDs, that have custom firmware, custom ASICs, again, to meet whatever requirements that our customers are looking for, or we'll sell uh, full systems, uh, systems being more on the end of data center. So that's giving them a server that is filled with not only our SSDs, but our HDDs as well. So you can kind of see when you, when you think of flash, the big picture um, or the big picture of flash, you know, there's countless technologies and a, a lot of different use cases for flash. And what we try to do, because we're playing in all these different segments, is leverage the innovations from one from one silo to the other, so that we can, which you know, continue to keep enabling our customers and empower them to reach their goals. Now, you know, what's next for the storage industry? Well, data is experiencing has been experiencing explosive growth, and it's showing no signs of slowing down. You know, back in the year 2000, and that was a long time ago, the basically the total demand, the, the storage demand in the market was one petabyte or about, which is roughly a thousand terabytes. Just seven years later, you know, some social media companies started within that time frame. That, that, uh, that demand went from one petabyte to one exabyte, which is one million terabytes. Well, now we're in 2022, 2025 is not too far from now. We're expecting to see, we're forecasting that the total world's demand for storage is going to be in the zettabyte range, which is 1 billion terabytes. So, and again, as we keep using the cloud, as we, as we record anything, you can think of iPhones now have, you know, the last, the one that came out last year had a one terabyte hard drive or, you know, one terabyte capacity. More and more data, people are, are doing more and more things that they want to store, that they want to be able to look at again. And this is exciting for us, right? We want to make sure that we're there to enable this market. We want to be able to provide products uh, to, to the demand that people are seeing, whether it's an HED or flash. So like, how are we enabling technology? You know, I've, I've given a lot of examples, but I want, to, I want to hone in on some of the products that we do have right now. So I've mentioned mobile already. Uh, or if you're, any of you are photographers, right? We have our, our Sandus SD cards and our micro SD cards. And um, I'm hoping some of you are gamers like I am. Uh, if any of you have a Nintendo Switch, there's a really good chance you have one of these micro SD cards in there to expand your storage. 
Um, and when we when we talk about gaming, WD Black is our gaming brand that you know has been seeing a lot of success lately. And the whole goal of that team is, you know, what do gamers want? What do gamers need? Let, let's make the products that help enable their experiences. I've talked about data center and cloud a couple of times. I just want to be able to show you an example of what those products look like. So in the back, you can see our SSDs um, and in the front, our HDD, our, one of our HDDs. So here we're showing an 18 terabyte. I know we have a 20 terabyte uh, that is either available now or coming out soon and that we're we're ex expecting that to just keep growing and growing uh, in, as for the years to come. And then lastly, this last product, uh, it, this one's specifically for automotive. So I, I touched on autonomous vehicles a little bit. Uh, as the autonomous vehicles, as those become a little bit more mature, a little bit more mainstream, uh, each one of those cars is going to need at least a terabyte of storage on it. And so this is where we we see another opportunity to you know put our products to help enable that ecosystem. So I know that there's a lot of information, but I hope this at least helped hone in a little bit on you know, who we are and what we do and what are, what are some of our products that we play in. But now I want to shift gears a little bit and, and pass it to Tony to tell you more about what, it, what it's like working here. Thanks, Jimmy. So the best way to get uh, started with Western Digital are through our RAMP internship program and our launch uh, new college graduate programs. Uh, the RAMP internship program offers you hands-on experience and activities to help you enter the workforce. And when we say hands-on, we really mean it, right? We want our interns to work alongside our professionals to help them solve the professional challenges that they face every day. Um, launch is also really great because as part of launch, you have a 12-month onboarding experience in your first year. And so that gives you... Um, you know, it helps you familiarize yourself with professionals in the company. It helps you build your network and it just really sets you up for long term success within the firm. So those are just, you know, two really, really great resources to get involved with Western Digital. Uh, talking about like some of the just the highlights about this year long onboarding and you get some exposure to this in, in ramp as well. But so for, you know, we're real world projects. Right. So if you look at the student at the top left, um, you know, he's an engineer working hands on with a product that we're, you know, preparing to launch and sell. Right. Um, everyone uh, within ramp or launch, you know, you get assigned uh, mentor uh, mentor to help guide you within your professional team. You also get visibility with our executive leadership, right? Through our executive speaker series. So uh, in this picture in the top right is uh, our president of technology and strategy, Dr. Siva Sivaram. Uh, we host, you know, professional and social networking events to, you know, help you build your network throughout the organization. And it's not like, it's not siloed where if you're an engineer, you're only meeting engineers or if you're on the business side, it's, you know, everyone across all class standings, across all business units getting together and, and building their networks. Um, we also offer supplemental training workshops that are not only professional oriented, but they also help you develop your soft skills. Um, they help you develop, you know, personal finance skills, help you not navigate the complexity of like corporate benefits and things like that. So that's a really great resource. And then, you know, philanthropic events are also really big for us as well. So. I believe in this picture on the bottom left, these are uh, ramp interns and uh, launch NCGs, you know, building bikes for underprivileged kids. So this is just, you know, a brief snapshot of some of the supplemental resources you get as either an intern or an NCG. Yeah, and I can attest, I was, I've been a part of both of these programs and <laughs> I remember that bike building event. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, so you know, as we were putting this presentation together, we felt that it was really important uh, to talk about DE&I. So here, what we're what you're seeing on the screen right now is our Western Digital's public statement around the DE&I. Um, and what I one thing I want to say is, you know, I've been I've been at the company just over two and a half years now, and I I can confidently say I've seen a lot of change. Like I've seen a lot of effort and uh, being done by our leadership to make sure that. Not only are we taking action around certain things, but making sure that there's a platform for all of our employees to make sure that their voices are heard, uh, so no one gets kind of left behind, um, or you know, feeling like they're being left behind or, or unheard. Um, and I think one of the best ways 
for us to make our voices heard or to try to enact change uh, within the company is through our business, business resource groups. So here at Western Digital, we have seven BRGs um, that all have kind of their main focuses. So and starting in the top left, we have we.can, which uh, brings awareness to disabilities of our employees and or their family members. We have we.elevate, which is our Black Professionals Network. We have we.equal, which is our LGBTQ plus and allies network. We have we.fuel, which is our Young Professionals Network. Uh, you can see that's actually a dodgeball tournament that that or that that BRG put together pre-pandemic. Um, it was something I didn't get to, to be a part of. I joined a little bit later in the year, but uh, I know that was a lot of fun, and, and people really are hoping that we can do that again. Um, then we have We Salute, which is our military and veterans network. Uh, we Dot Unidos, which Diane and I are repping today, um, which is our Latinx professionals network. Uh, we are both on the board, and you know. We were the ones who are, who are helping push to get this uh, this webinar with Chip done today. And then last but not least, we have We.Win, which is our women's professional network. Um, so I think that the BRGs are a great place to, to build a sense of community and to you know meet other people or, or I guess expand your network here at, at Western Digital. But more importantly, each BRG has the opportunity to provide professional development workshops for not only their members, but for the entire company. You know, it. Uh, a lot of times what we see with our different BRGs is bringing more awareness and education to uh, the entire company around, uh, you know, around each of our uh, respective kind of focuses. Um, and then like last but not least, but it, each, of, each of these BRGs empowers, you know, their members or the entire company. It's all about making sure that you know, we're making that that Western Digital is a great place to work, and we are able to kind of enact that change. Um, and most importantly, uh, anyone can join. All, all BRGs are open to everyone. So if it's something that you want to be a part of, and so you can, you know, be on the board or, or try to push a certain project that's absolutely uh, available to you, or if it's, you know, there's an organization you want to join just to learn a little bit more, uh, that is, and be an ally, that is absolutely awesome as well. Great. So I just wanted to kind of go a little bit more in depth about global giving, right? So as a global workforce, global giving is something that's really important to our organization. And our main program is called We Care, right? It's a volunteer program where employees across the globe can volunteer their time to give back to their local communities. Um, and it's based on three main pillars. So STEM education, which provides access to educational opportunities in STEM for underprivileged and underrepresented K through 12 youth. Uh, hunger relief to support organizations that address immediate hunger needs in a community and whether that be locally, regionally, globally. Uh, and environmental preservation where we give to organizations focusing on environmental protection and preservation and the public education of such issues. Um, so in addition to these you know, three global pillars, each region that you know, we operate in um, can, can choose an area, address the, uh, a specific need that's, you know, relevant to the local context of that region, right? So for the United States, for example, there's an additional focus on veterans and military families. Um, in India, there's attention given to gender equality. However, our company also supports communities in various other ways. So community grants to nonprofit organizations whose program aligns with our focus areas. Um, scholarship programs where we offer scholarships to students anywhere in the world pursuing an undergraduate degree in a STEM major. Uh, as an important fact, the global program is committed to awarding up to $1 million in academic scholarships. Uh, product donations, which are provided year round to schools and nonprofits to help upgrade their technology infrastructure. We'll also donate um, products for fundraising initiatives, you know, raffles and giveaways, things like that. And lastly, disaster relief, right, to support uh, when, when, when we respond in times of natural disaster by supporting to local organizations by providing leaf efforts, um, financial assistance through corporate gifts and, and matching employee donations. So just talking about some of the, you know, philanthropic examples and giving back to the community is our core philosophy. Uh, you may recognize the long haired gentleman in the left picture on the call. <laughs> I believe this was backpack stuffing uh, for school supplies given to students in need. Um, in the middle picture, these are some 
um, either N NCGs or interns uh, volunteering at, at a local food pantry. And on the right hand side here, we have a, a, a park cleanup initiative. So, you know, each year we bring in about 400 early career employees. That's, you know, among interns and NCGs. And so, we, you know, we're looking for humble, hungry, you know, soon to be professionals in not only STEM, I mean, I know this group is primarily STEM, but also on the business side, sales, marketing, HR, product management. You know, for some of you, product management might be a really good route to go into if you, you're coming from a STEM background and you want to get a little exposure on the business side. And maybe Jimmy can speak to that a little later. Um, and so these are just examples of some of our past sort of uh, interns that have been converted to NCGs or, you know, NCGs that are currently with the firm. Perhaps the ones that are most relevant to this group would be like ASIC development engineer, firmware engineering. Um, data science, industrial engineering, for example, for example. Um, and last summer we we converted about 40% of our interns into full-time hires. But our goal is actually to do better, right? We want to we want to get to a place where over 50% of our incoming NCGs were interns with us. So I wanted to, you know, in a drive to get you all to go ahead and apply, you can see the link to our um, university job board up there at the top of the page. And here are just some of the positions that we currently have listed available. Um, again, your launch positions on your left will be your full-time roles. Uh, and on the ramp on the right-hand side here, these are your internship roles. The way our, our site is structured is that the jobs are sort of organized by location, not necessarily by like discipline or work group. So, um, you know, we try to put them in the titles. I think it's safe to assume though, if the location isn't explicitly in the title, more than likely it's California, um, especially, you know, Northern California, either in our Milpitas or Great Oaks locations. I wanted to also just put this slide up and just leave it up for a minute, just so you all can look at it because I know uh, some of the titles are super vague, right? Like just engineering in Colorado, like what does that mean? So uh, <laughs> we put this here so you guys could just look for the specific specializations, sort of concentrations that each of these groups are looking for. And um, just, I know um, co-op is really big with engineering. Our only location that does co-ops is in Minnesota. All the other locations um, only do exclusively internship or full-time hiring. Great, and so if you weren't fast enough to, to type that, <laughs> that web address in, uh, created this QR code, so feel free. Uh, that'll direct you directly to our university job page where we have the full-time and the summer internship jobs posted. Um, a caveat about the full-time role, so you don't have to be you know, graduating this semester to be considered a new college graduate. We'll actually consider anyone who's graduated in the last two years. Um, so anyone from, December 2020 through June 2022, you're eligible for new college graduate roles. Um, and I just want to also plug that I will be at the Region 7 conference in Atlanta, my hometown. So please, you know, if you're going to be there, feel free to come by. Tell me, you know, you met me at the event. So, uh, you know, I'll have a frame of reference and I, I would really love um, to get to know some of you uh, more in depth. So. Uh, and with that, I'm just going to hand it over to Diana for our fireside chat. Gracias, Tony. Gracias, Jimmy. Gracias, Ship Familia. We're excited to be here and chat about kick, kicking butt in the data storage. I'm here with two of our group game changers, Jimmy Gomez and Damaris Davis. But before we get into our discussion, let's kick it off with a video. What's amazing about the technology of a hard disk drive is that the reader and writer head have to fly over the platters to read and write information, uh, like a jet engine flying over the ground at one centimeter height. Head technology is important because it stores a lot of the media and data and videos and pictures used around the world. 
Hi, I'm Damaris Davis. I am a development engineer technologist at Western Digital. I did my first internship at 1997, and I did four internships uh, during my college years and started full-time in 2002. I got hooked on engineering, building a Rube Goldberg machine. It's basically a chain reaction machine. It gave me the opportunity to experiment and brainstorming and collaborating with fellow students. So my role at Western Digital is to develop a technology for the next manufacturing systems of hard disk drive. Uh, I feel like I, I'm able to make an impact. Some years we're only able to store uh, you know, a couple terabytes and when you see a couple years later that we're able to store even more information, we had a part in that. I think someone should apply to Western Digital because it gives them an opportunity to collaborate and learn from other engineers that are at the top of their fields uh, in this technology. What an inspiring video, Damaris, really showing the innovation and the engineering side of products. So we heard about the great products that we offer. We heard about the awesome platforms that we have for interns, new college grads, you know, even professions. But now let's segue and get personal. So Jimmy Damaris, walk us through your career journey and what led you to pursuit of engineering. Well, uh, my uh, my dad's from Dominican Republic, my mom's from Puerto Rico, and my mom is a teacher, and my dad's mother is also a teacher. So they definitely instilled the importance of education. And also, uh, as my uh, grandmother being a teacher, uh, there was this whole sense of community, um, uh, uh, togetherness, you know, helping the community. Uh, also, my dad, he was a maker. He was very resourceful in the Dominican Republic. He used to build stuff when he was young, like little radios and stuff out of the, um, the stuff, the resources that are around him. So that whole using what you have uh, really uh, led to when I was a kid, I used to make projects, you know, uh, build stuff out of wood um, and then use a little electronic kits and uh, and then uh, even programming on some old uh, computers. Uh, uh, so it was fun to experiment with that. So I went into engineering. I went to Berkeley. I uh, majored in mechatronics, uh, in mechanical engineering with a focus of mechatronics. So because I love the electron intersection of electronics and software and mechanical systems. And I would spend, you know, long nights in the basement of the mechanical engineering uh, building programming robot arms. Uh, so, yeah, what I do at Western Digital is is at the intersection. We develop new manufacturing systems for our worldwide factories. So that means the mechanical electrical software systems, trying to uh, figure out how to improve it, how to make it work, how to um, it down to the nanometer level. And there's a lot of data analysis that goes with it and data automation between our worldwide um, factories. So that's very exciting. And it's a a lot of fun to collaborate, not only within our, our company in the US, but our multiple sites around the world. Awesome. Um, so yeah, let's see my, my, my career path or, uh, you know, how did I get into engineering? Um, a little bit like the I, I I was really big in the Legos growing up. I liked building things in that sense, but that's kind of where that ended. And uh, I know my my journey into engineering is not like <laughs> not very typical. Um, so I'm, I'm originally from Chicago. I went to Yen University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So shout out to any of my Illini uh, watching right now. Uh, but I, it was when I was my senior year of high school, just before starting, I, I went to visit U of I. And during the, the little presentations about majors, uh, the student up there said, well, if, do you like math? Do you like engineering? Or sorry, do you like math and do you like science? Then maybe engineering is for you. And I decided that day, okay, yeah, I guess engineering's for me. <laughs> and uh, so I know that's not not really tradi uh, traditional from maybe some of you here in, in, in your background. But um, 
uh, yeah, and then, you know, I, I went into engineering and while I was in school, um, even before I started, uh, the SHIP UIUC chapter had reached out to me and SHIP was a, a huge, like very instrumental in my uh, college career. Uh, I served on my executive board for three of my years there. Uh, I was also on like my freshman round, ta round table um, uh, uh, board. And uh, since I've graduated, I'm actually, I've been volunteering with SHIP. Um, I've been working on the, I've been volunteering on the National Planning Committee for the, the annual convention. So hope to see some of you uh, in Charlotte this year, this upcoming November. Um, but uh, yeah, so after, after I did you know, my, my time at, at U of I, I actually went to work in the automotive industry. So I worked as a product development engineer for about five years. Um, and honestly, it was like kind of during that time that I was trying to figure out if, if this is what I wanted to do or if there was something more that, that I wanted. And I, I have to say, you know, I know we're, we're at the tail end of, of Women's History Month, but, you know, my mom was probably one of my bigger inspirations as far as, you know, continuing to strive to, you know, do better or, you know, keep building myself up. Um, and she was a she was always kind of an inspiration for me there and it, it was with that I, I decided to you know kind of pivot from engineering and i went to graduate school to get my mba uh where i went to um university of southern california business uh, marshall school of business and it was during my time there that i actually you know i, I found out about western digital uh and i interned uh um the summer in between my my two years of grad school and then i converted full-time in um in in 2019 so i'm a part of a, a mba rotational program here at western digital but i won't go into too much detail on on my roles but i am doing product management right now thank you i love that you guys are honoring your latinas and your family jimmy your mom damaris your grandmother in spirit of honor on women's history month and really honoring them so Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Damaris, in the video you mentioned about your internship journey, can you share with us and also how that's connected and led you to, to where you are now? Yeah, it was great. I did four internships. So the first one, I was on the automated manufacturing line where, you know, you had robots and everything and I was hands on with the, the robots. So I learned a lot from that. The second year, uh, I worked in the materials lab uh, doing experiments and, and, and so reported on that and uh, exciting. And the third uh, internship I did was a data analysis uh, for the manufacturing site. And for the fourth, I worked on the, uh, Almaden, uh, the research center. And so we were developing new technology uh, in a lab setting. Uh, so I, uh, and it was that fourth internship that I ended up uh, getting uh, hired for. So I think it's just incredible in terms of all the different um, areas, uh, you know, a wide breadth of different experiences across the country. Uh, I mean, across the company, uh, uh, areas to learn and um, grow from and, and see what other people are doing. Thank you. So Jimmy, you shared with us your journey um, of becoming an engineer, and now you're a product manager. Can you talk to us about that and the connection between the two? Yeah, um, so I, I said for me, um, at least in my my old job, my old company, you know, like I said, I, I did product development and I really enjoyed it. But I think I, I got to a point during my my career there that I, I kind of noticed that I never really understood why I was working on some of my projects or like what was kind of the main, what was the strategy? What was some of the reasoning behind, oh, we need to focus on this versus something else right now. Um, and it was kind of at that point in time when I was considering going to, to grad school that I learned about product management. And, and product management is a role where like, they, they really do say you, you are supposed to be the bridge between the engineers and the business team. Um, and, and honestly, a lot of times to be a product manager, you need to have a, a STEM background, whether that is a degree or working experience, um, you need to have a technical background 
uh, to you know really fully um, be able to perform this role. So it's been cool because uh, as a product manager, you're you're helping work on some of the strategy, right? Like, hey, you know, we've been talking to customers, or maybe we did a survey, and they said that we want we're looking for X Y Z features, or we're really looking for a product like this. Um, and you, you take that as an idea and then you go and you start working with your engineering teams on, okay, how, how could we build this? Right. And, um, you know, what, what do we need to have? What, how can we make this device work? And then, and then after that, you have to actually figure out how long will it take us to do this? How much is it going to cost? Stuff like that, right? Like really more of that business side of things where you, you're caring about, you know, what's our go-to-market strategy? Things like that. So product management's a cool, a cool way to to dip your feet in in the into both sides and and kind of feel like the owner of that product. I love it. You know, and really engineering can be very versatile, you know, learning about the engineering side of things and getting into the mechanics, mechanics of things. And Jimmy, I loved how you mentioned the Legos. You liked playing with Legos. I'm all too familiar with those. I step on them all the time as my kids really, those are their favorites, Legos and blocks. So hopefully they're on their path to STEM also. And um, it's really a pathway to explore other areas. So thanks for sharing your, your journey from engineering to product management. So now I really want to hone into our culture and our heritage, right? And it wouldn't be a full-blown Latino discussion if we didn't talk about the challenges and the barriers. And so as both of you being Hispanic, Latinos, engineering professionals, what barriers did you face and how did you break through them? So uh, I think for me, uh, it's uh, appreciating how important my voice is, my perspective, my background, what I bring to the table as a human being, as a woman, as a Hispanic, all of that. Yeah. Uh, what, how my brought uh, upbringing contributes to it. So it's easy to get a, in a lost in uh, opinions of, you know, other people's perspectives and that sort of thing and, and understanding that mine is also very important. Uh, the thing I love about my job in terms of like uh, I do a lot of data analysis is that, um, you know, when you approach problems or anything, uh, there's a lot of preconceived uh, opinions or uh, notions of oh, we think there's this problem and this is what's going on, you know, jumping to conclusions. But from a data analysis side, you get to, you know, run numbers and get to come with, there's a certain power that comes with looking at problems and analysis and saying, actually, here's the data. This is what's going on. This is what's real. And that kind of elevates the conversation in terms of, Oh, uh, there's a lot of opinions versus here's a lot of um, strong fact that's research data that's consistent that's pointing into real solutions. So that really helps me find my voice and my confidence in terms of my skill level and what I'm saying is coming from a position of power and authority in terms of of, of analysis technique technical and that also helps bridge the kind of gaps in terms of uh, uh, there. Yeah, I would say for me, if I look back on, you know, as I came out of undergrad, um, you know, I've, I've mentioned that ship was a, a really big component of my, my undergrad career. And when I got to uh, my first job, uh, I didn't have that anymore. Uh, and it was it was kind of a hard adjustment in in the sense of there was no you know we unidos at my old company there was there were no employee resource groups at all um, they I didn't have the I didn't have like a specific ship chapter associated with with my company um, so it was it was hard just kind of getting acclimated um, it would have been nice. I didn't have a mentor so like there's a lot of things that I had to kind of figure out on my own um, at that company and it it was tough like that first year was was pretty hard. Um, I eventually kind of found my own way, but, um, you know, and, and I think a, a, to kind of continue on that, that feeling that I didn't have, right, a, a, that sense of community or, or, or organization or a group that I could be associated with 
when I started full time here at Western Digital, I was super happy to hear about We Dar Unidos, right? And and I, I remember the first event that we had, I, I made sure that I went to it. Um, I, that first one might have been around Hispanic Heritage Month, but um, it, either way, like it, it was something that like I knew. I was like, cool. This is this is something that I've been missing. This is what I've needed at work, right? I've I I haven't had this at work. I've only ever had it in my more of my personal life. Um, so I think what was really important for me was I think we had a very early on. Um, there was we had like a meeting with We Unidos, just like people meeting, and someone asked like, is or not someone. Uh, one of the presidents asked like, hey, does anyone have any suggestions of organizations that we should be working with? So I immediately rose my hand and I was like, we, we need to have a partnership with CHIP <laughs> because this is, this is this is something, this is a great organization that we should be a part of or, you know, that we should be working with. Um, and, that, and that's kind of what prompted me joining the board was because I want to develop that pipeline. I want us to be at the national convention. I want us to be recruiting um you know, ship members, because as, as one, I know how great we are. And I know how, you know, I know how smart we are, I know how, how hardworking we are. And uh, it, it's through these BRGs now and, and through, and through without any of those that I feel like I can, I can provide this to the company. I can enact the change that I'm looking for. Um, and it's great. It's honestly, it's great leadership development. It's, it's really good to have, be doing this outside of my normal job. Um, not only does, does it give me kind of exposure to the rest of the business or, you know, rest of the company, but, you know, it makes me feel better knowing that um, I'm, I'm trying to enact change here. I love that you, you mentioned that, Jimmy, because I was in that room, right, when those discussions happened. And the Maris brought up a point of elevating voices. And really, that's what these platforms are about, right? Jimmy, you mentioned the SHIP partnership, and now here we are, right, hosting this webinar, and that's what Elevating Voices does, and that's what these business resource groups are all about. Um, so definitely um, having that within our reach, you know, having the best both best worlds are both, right? It's like you do your day job, but then you also have these platforms where you can instill your leadership skills, right? have your voice be heard, having a sense of familia at the workplace. Tamaris, I want to pivot to you. Um, you're a woman leader, a working mom, right? What challenges did you face with advancing in your career as a working mom and as a, a woman leader? Uh, I think uh, just challenges is, is, is learning, keeping up with the technology. I think uh what we're working on in itself is challenging the subject matter when it comes to hdd it's easy to um overlook the tech uh how hard it is and we're really controlling things down to the nanometer level uh with hardware that's you know maybe micron specification uh, so really small and uh you know, pumping out, you know, millions of it on a regular basis with good yields, that in a technical sense is difficult. And whenever we have a platform that we release, we have to top ourselves in order to, to keep up with the challenges. So in order to do that, you know, having to uh, really understand the mechanical side and really elevate on the um, data analysis side and, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of learning from your peers, um, but also learning uh, uh, um, myself in terms of, uh, of keeping that uh, elevated in order to accomplish what needs to be done. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. And on this topic of challenges, right, let's pivot into our current reality. And, you know, coming out of a two-year hiatus, you know, working from home amidst a, a global pandemic, now having to pivot back into sort of this hybrid model, right? I think one thing we can all agree about the pandemic is that it gave us the, that flexibility to manage our time. You know, some of us are caretakers, we're parents, parents to fur babies. Now those responsibilities are having to shift, right, as we head back. So can you share that with us? Um, I'll start with you, Jimmy. 
and, and navigating your way through a career in a pandemic and now having to pivot back into the office? Yeah, I think, um, you know, my internship was completely in person. And then like the first six ish months of my my first year full time was in person, but then you know, the pandemic hit. So it was, it was definitely, um, it was a change of pace in the sense of, or, or like really a big pivot because I was so used to, I've got, I had gotten so used to being able to walk up to someone's desk and, you know, Hey, do you have a couple minutes? Can, can we figure this out? Or, um, oh yeah, let's drive, you know, let's go whiteboard it. Let's go jump. Let's go, let's go in this conference room. Um, and I, I got really used to doing that. So then when the pandemic hit, like all of that kind of went away. And so that made things a little bit harder as far as, you know, working with my current team um, and, and trying to, you know, get our work done. But I think what really was even tougher was because I'm in this rotational program, I rotate in, into new teams every year. So my second, my second team, I, I never met anyone in person. We were fully remote that entire time. It was very, you know, the, the August of 2020 is when I joined that team and I didn't leave them till 21. So it was, it was definitely, it was, it was hard. It was, it was definitely tough. Um, just, and, uh, you know, working from that perspective of not having known these people beforehand or at least meeting them. Um, I've, I've been getting more used to it now, now that we've, you know, we have a couple of years under our belt as far as experience working remotely. Um, but I am, you know, I will say that, you know, now that we're going to be going more into a hybrid model where, you know, three days in the office, two days out, um, my tendencies are kind of the, the habits I've developed over the last few years will be a bit of a change. Uh, so just making sure I, we, you know, I have a puppy now too. Well, he's a year old, but still he's, he's a puppy. Um, so now, you know, getting him used to me being gone, you know, a few days a week. Uh, and making sure that I have, you know, the caretakers in, in that sense, um, you know, dog walker. But yeah, I think it will be nice to get back into that office environment just so that we can go back to the, you know, going over to someone's desk, asking a quick question, grabbing a conference room to to kind of collaborate a little bit more. Um, but it, it was definitely it was an adjustment. It was it was a, it was an adjustment at the beginning. And, um, you know, I have to say that it, it's gotten it got better over time. Yeah, yeah I de go ahead, the money. Yeah, definitely. The pandemic itself was uh, very challenging. I, I have two kids, so it really required a lot of honesty about what's going on with each of them, um, uh, the struggles they were going through, and really creativity in terms of overcoming uh, the challenges uh, that's going on, innovation. Um, I mean, we bonded together. We got to spend a lot of time together. So that was great. And we also were um, thinking about how we could support our community. Like we uh, made masks, we 3D printed face shields when at the beginning of the pandemic when it, uh, it was in short supply. So um, it, you know, it was definitely an experience. Uh, but when my kids went back to school, they realized how much uh, that how important that um, social connection, community connection was to them. So it was like a, a much bigger appreciation uh, uh, for, you know, people, for the your human connection. And really, I'm going back to work. Uh, you know, I went back to work today. There were so many people there. And it was just like meeting so many friends. Uh, you know, <laughs> and just a you know a big extended family reunion. We're just all so happy to see each other uh, because we've worked with each other for, you know, I guess for me over decades. You know, of, of working and knowing people and and you know how your kids are doing. Yeah, mine are. So it's just that great, a big appreciation for um, community um, and getting to re, re get back to that. So it's, it's been uh, an experience for sure. Yeah, no, I believe that, you know, and I love hearing both of you guys' stories, you know, Jimmy, you being longer working from home than in the office, you know, yep. Maris, you know, being in the office for a long time and then two years and now coming back and 
missing that human interaction. And, you know, it just shows how resilient we are, right? You know, us as Latinos, us in general, how we just adjusted and, and we're able to adjust, prove ourselves and pivot. Um, now, with the interest of time, I do want to shift gears a little bit. Um, the three of us share one common interest. We are Latinos. We work at Western Digital. We're on our mission to change the narrative. The Latinos, you know, growing presence is making the largest minority in the U.S., right? Pew Research projected our growth to be 30% by 2060. We're getting more and more educated. How is WD paving the way for our Latino community? Well, I love uh, getting together with our, our BRGs, our communities, and our shared experiences and our perspectives. And having that family within a family is a big deal. So uh, especially with all that's going on in the world, to have people that you know understand uh, your perspective and and, and uh, that's a big deal. So that shared experiences, but also the fact that we're working on collaborating on what we can do to change the world for the better. So, you know, we see, you know, what's going on and we want, we're motivated. We want to improve things. So, and having your brothers and sisters in the family uh, work together for that, that that's wonderful. Yeah, no, speaking on motivation, right, and innovation, Jimmy, I'm going to steer this question to you. What cool innovations are you currently working on or what's to come and what are you excited for the future of WD? Yeah, so um, the team I'm on right now, our, our whole focus is strategic initiatives or, you know, thinking a little bit outside the box. So I can't give away too many details, but I have to say, like, I do like our, our at least the team, I'm liking my team's impact that we, we potentially have. So like my team, the whole idea is like we incubate a new idea and then we, we kind of give it back to the primary business. Um, but yeah, I think I think we're we're seeing more of us, uh, you know, Western Digital, especially from a flash perspective. We're taking more initiative on like, okay, what do customers want? Like, what what are what are people's needs actually going to be? You know, I talked about how data is growing, or and 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 everyone needs something different. So I think it's been cool. Um, my team specifically, we've been trying to look a little bit more of at what are our customers using our device? How are our customers using our devices? Right? What in um, so I'm looking at it from a cloud perspective or data center perspective. How are they using it? How can we better support them? How can we better optimize our our drives, our SSDs, so that you know they get the best performance that they're looking for? Uh, so I think that uh, I think that's been really cool, just to see how you know we we're taking the steps, we're we're, we're making sure that we're listening, we're trying to come up with the next best thing um, that will really enable our customers. Marisa, anything to add to that? Oh, I mean, that's really awesome. But uh, yes, I love it. And uh, yeah, we're always uh, growing and, and building on top of our successes. And uh, in the last couple of years, we've been making more patents and, um, and, and um, improving things further. All right. OK, Mijente, get excited. You heard it from our experts. Be authentic in your career journey, ignite the change in you. Um, so now let's go into some Q&A. Yeah, so if any of you have a question, go ahead and put it um, in the Q&A box and we'll try to get to them. Uh, I was also gonna mention uh, advice. Uh, yes, one piece of advice you like to give to our audience. Oh, yeah. So my piece of advice is always uh, growing and, and, and learning. Um, I'm always excited because especially nowadays, there's so much accessible. So I've been taking on myself to learn, you know, more of the electronics and, and programming. There's Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, that sort of thing, and, and playing with robotics. So exploring uh, stuff on, uh, um, 
you know, uh, what I can do and innovate. And I, I learned so much from just fun projects, you know, like I made this welcome bot over here or um, uh, me and my family, we've made a couple multiple humanoids and, and it's been really great experimenting on, on these fun projects. And then, um, and then bringing what I learned to, to my work. And it's, it's great uh, what's accessible to learn. Yes, thank you for sharing those. We do have a special treat for the audience at the end, showcasing um, the robotics, so stay tuned. But before that, we do have a question. How do you navigate your Latinidad, Latino identity within the workplace? I, you know, I think it's wonderful. There are multiple people that are you know it's a shared community we know each other i definitely take the time to to practice my spanish and you know that shared language is is just a wonderful thing especially you hear it you talk it you know um and you know and you learn where everyone's from you know i'm from puerto rico you're from nicaragua oh and the shared customs is and and even there's you know special celebration days the hispanic heritage with the um the the dancers just really touched uh, my heart to have that that celebration uh, yeah yeah i would i would definitely i would echo that um i know some of the some of the events that we put on as far as we unidos goes i think those are some of been some of the more fun ones that i've done right i remember the year we did loteria on, on Cinco de Mayo and, and, and other, you know, in, in the future, I know we can't talk about it too much, but what we have in store this year as far as Hispanic Heritage Month, um, I think those are great ways, you know, through our BRGs that we can really, um, you know, showcase our, our culture and be able to share our experiences, like Damati said. It, it still blows my mind that we went to a Mark Anthony concert at a box at the SAP auditorium and it was just great. We we're all dancing and singing and, you know, old friends, you know, that I've known for like, you know, a decade and a half and new friends that, that you know, I'd never met before and, and getting to uh, just enjoy each other's company and, and it's great. Yeah, no, definitely be, being able to just be our authentic self, right? Our culture is so lively. It's just full of, of culture and live music and, and fun. So to be able to embrace that at work, be our authentic self, it's just amazing. Yeah. So, so there's another for the panel. Um, someone asked, what are your favorite video games? You guys mentioned that. So if you had any you wanted to share, um, that was a question. <laughs> I did. I thought I saw that one. Um, let's see. So I'm really into kind of like RPG, more adventure type games. So I'll, I'll, I'll um, probably some recency bias. I've been playing uh, Horizon Forbidden West um, for like over the last month. So that one's been that one I've been enjoying a lot. But if I had to say, you know, like what's my favorite series? It's it's definitely Legend of Zelda. That's that's my favorite series. That's kind of like the first video game I ever played and beat uh, back when I was, what, like nine, <laughs> nine or 10 years old. So that's definitely up there for me. Yeah, I would say the Breath of the Wild is a perfect pandemic game. Yeah. We're definitely exploring the great outdoors uh, in Hyrule. <laughs> <laughs> great game. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not much of a game player, but um, my daughter, she loves Roblox. <laughs> and, and just for the audience, do you want to share this? We do have a special edition uh, game drive, Call of Duty special edition. So of all of you who are Call of Duty fans, be sure to check out those product lines. Yeah, WD Black is definitely where it's at. All right, so I know we're basically at time, so just wanted to show this last little video that we have of Damaris's uh, robots. Oh, hold on, I forgot to share. <laughs> Western Digital is a great place to work. We are looking for bright, innovative, creative engineers 
willing to think outside of the box. Western Digital is awesome. So thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. And it was it was great to be able to tell you more about Western Digital and and I hope you you guys can apply. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank our you. panelists. Thank you, Chef. Take care. Bye. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for joining us uh, tonight, Western Digital team, uh, Damaris, Jimmy, Diana, and Tony. We really appreciated getting to learn a lot more about Western Digital and all the um, opportunities for Latinos with Western Digital. So thank you again for joining us. Have a great evening. And this was recorded and will be on our YouTube channel um, if you wish to watch it later or share it. Um, thank you again and have a great evening. Bye.